next up, we have Sandra Lopez, who is a VP at Intel Sports, and she will be talking to us and giving us a morning keynote on being unapologetically you. Hello, can you guys see me? Good morning, everybody. I have a step and repeat MV, so I'm behind a uh, boring white screen. Uh, screen. Um, but thank you for the kind introduction and a good morning to everybody. It's such an honor to join you at the second virtual Girl Geek um, conference called Elevate. Uh, today's a really special day because it's International Women's Day and it's an opportunity for us to recognize the progress that has been made and the progress that we're making and the progress that all of you on the phone and joining us virtually will be making as well. And I think when I talk about progress, it's important to recognize that progress isn't achieved alone. And um, the intent of progress is how do we help flip the narrative? A narrative that honestly is very bleak for us women in tech. 20% um, of women are participating in technology. 5% of startups are owned by women, and 5% of women hold leadership positions in the tech industry. And what's really disheartening is that a lot of young females want to join tech, and they lose interest after they hit the age of 11. And while I look at these sombering stats, I actually am very optimistic because we have organizations like Girl Geek X that are providing tools and resources that are going to help us chip away at the glass ceiling, a ceiling that our society, honestly, has been engineered to advantage men. And so please join me. I think it's important to thank Angie, Gretchen, and Sir Kurtha for not only having the vision, but also acting on the vision. All of us can have a vision, but many of us don't take action. So it's important to recognize that all of you are doing your part to help shift the overall narrative. And um, when Sakurtha reached out to me and asked me to uh, do, do a keynote here with uh, Girl Geek X, I, I read her email and automatically said, yes, I'm going to do it. I didn't even check on my calendar. I was going to switch my calendar for everything just to make sure I participated in this particular conference. And, and so, Kurtha, you in your email to me on LinkedIn, you made a statement that I wanted to highlight. We're just a group of three women trying to encourage women to not give up and stay in tech. And so I think, Sir Kurtha, and to the two of you, you're just not three females. You're a hero providing many of us on opportunities to succeed. As a panelist, and I joined you guys twice already in 2015 and 2017, you provided me with the opportunity to revisit my younger self and also re-examine my current self. So I want to thank three of you guys for giving me the gift to participate and yet have another opportunity today to talk to the leaders of today and those of tomorrow. So this year's conference, Elevate, I love the pillars that you chose. You chose inspire, connect, and celebrate. And for me, those words exude positivity. They talk about growth, progress, and fun. And the notion about celebration, you know, for me in corporate America, we often don't use the term celebrate. But today, we're all celebrating around the globe in International Women's Day to recognize that, you know, we have made social, economic, and cultural achievements. And it's also important to recognize that there's so much more work to be done. There's still pay disparity, gender imbalance, there's abuse of power, there's microaggressions. And as we celebrate, we can't forget the individuals that came before us to pave the way. And what I wanted to highlight is some of those individuals that influenced me when I was growing up. Um, when I was a young girl, I admired Marie Curie for really her boldness, and she was fearless, and she accomplished many firsts. I don't know if you guys know her, but I wanted to highlight her first. She was the first woman to win a Nobel Prize. She was first to win two Nobel Prizes in two different scientific fields, and nobody has achieved that to date. She was first to be part of only mother-daughter team to win a Nobel Prize. First woman to be appointed as faculty at the Ecole Normale Superiore. First to become a professor at the University of Paris. First woman to be honored with an intermittent at the Pantheon. And she did all of this while having a family. And I loved how you guys highlighted earlier in terms of the importance of having males on her side because she too had a male ally. And that was her dad pursuit, um, 
telling her that she can pursue anything that she wanted to do and pursue her career in science, despite the fact that she was in an all-male world. And so she had nothing to fear, and so she aspired me to be fearless as I embarked in my career. And that's the past. And then the present, there's some amazing females that exist, and I wanted to highlight Chantal Bell, who I think is also going to have several firsts in her life. She's only 25, and she recognized an opportunity that many females um, can face a common cancer, which is cervical cancer, and I have an appreciation for what she's doing because four years ago, I had early diagnosis of cervical cancer. And what she's trying to do, she's trying to do similar to the pregnancy test. Can she provide all the females in the world the ability to do early detection, detection of cervical cancer? And then she's trying to make sure that we all have access to, to it. So she's looking at pricing that is economical. And so her effort to provide us females um, a solution to do preventative care is going to give us an opportunity to live longer and healthier lives. And I think in addition to Shundell, I think it's really important today that you celebrate yourself and not just yourself, but really celebrate your individuality. Because over the time of my career, I really learned that what makes this world super special is our individuality. Now it took me 35 years to embrace my own individuality. So my background was, um, I grew up really conflicted. I'm the middle child of a Mexican-American family. I grew up in a middle-class household. And when I was growing up and I would interact with my American friends, I was just never American enough for them. And then I would travel to Mexico or I would hang out with my Mexican family and I was never Mexican enough for them. I simply was never enough. Yet I knew it was important to accept my never enoughness and my reality that I would never be enough and acknowledge that maybe in this world I was never going to fit in. And yet I, well, recognize I was never going to fit in. I wasn't going to let that stop me. Similar to Marie Curie, I wanted to have my own first. I was the first one that graduated from college. I was the first one that entered the business world. I was the first one that told my family it was crazy and I wanted to enter into the world of tech, living in Silicon Valley. And as I entered different phases of my life, you know, Sandra, the college student, Sandra, the recent college grad, Sandra, in Silicon Valley, I did what I did best is I was a chameleon trying to survive in my current habitat. And what I mean by that is I changed who I was based on the situation that I found myself in. And that's what I did when I was a child. So when I started my career in Silicon Valley, I found that I was surrounded myself with men and men in suits. So what did that mean for me? I completely threw away the wonderful dresses and wonderful pants and the wonderful shoes that I used to love to wear. And I purchased a lot of suits and not just any skirt suits. I purchased pantsuits. And to amplify that, I actually wore shoes very akin to men. They were square toe in the front. And then I would add like two inch uh, stack heels in the back because I thought that that extra inch would actually give me a level playing field and no it didn't give me a level playing field um, but, but I did everything that I, that I could possibly assimilate and in my first job I came I encountered um, what I realized was tension with my values I joined a company I was one of the 10 in terms of rising the executive stat, uh, track so basically we had a path that provided us tools and resources to succeed and one of those tools was having lunch with the C-level executives and I was super excited I prepared I had the questions and I sat down on the left hand side was the chief operating officer across from me was a my male colleague by the name of Aaron and the chief operating officer kind of whispered in my ear he leaned in and he said you know Sandra you're never gonna succeed like Aaron and so I just scratched my head I'm like well you know I know Aaron's really good at staff so maybe he's gonna advise me to take take an MBA class. And as he whispered in my ear, he said, you know, Sandra, there's a glass ceiling that exists. And I hit pause and I thought to myself, is he telling me because I happened to be born a female that I was not going to make it to the executive ranks? I went home and I pondered and Marie Curry came back to mind. I'm like, she was bold and fearless. Similarly, I will do the same and I'll make a statement. The next day I went into my company and I quit. And I quit because I didn't think anybody should hold me back because of my gender. And so, and I knew that I was resilient and I would be able to find a job. And shortly thereafter, I was able to find a job still in a male world. 
And when my values, such as being a female and female equality and the right that I should be able to be a C-level, sometimes I found myself wasting my time pursuing activities to fit into society, but not to fit into my own skin. And so I would play golf because I knew in the business world, golf was a place where decisions were being made. So every week I would spend money on practice. I spent the most expensive golf clubs thinking that it would improve my game. I would go out there all Saturday and play. And trust me, I hated hated golf. And then I recognized that one of my female friends who also played golf was so good. And then yet she was never invited to the party. So I decided to quit and I took on other activities like happy hour that men would do so I could just participate and just be like one of the guys. And then I fast forward in 2006, I joined until 2005, 2006, I had a meeting with, by, with an individual by the name of Early Felix. And um, Early Felix was put, point together executive leaders that happened to be Latinos. And he asked me a question. He asked me this, what does it feel like to be a corporate Latina? A Latina working in corporate America. And I was just like, what are you talking about? And I was asking, like, what are you talking about? Because I never made my ethnicity or my gender an issue. Yet it was bothering me because I couldn't answer the question. So the, each day would go by. I would take showers. I would think about it. And several months later, I was in the shower. And I realized something. I realized that I was just never myself. And so in the spirit, I wanted to discover who I was. I began to shed the skin that society influenced me to wear, such as the pantsuit. And I began to be more familiar with who I was, who Sandra Lopez was in her own skin. Five feet, two inches tall. I was destined to wear feminine clothes. I wanted to wear those red suede pump shoes that you see on the, on the PowerPoint with three inch stilettos. I wanted to wear dresses that would accentuate my Latina curves because that would be my ability to embrace my unapologetic self. And if I were to advise my younger self and do it all over again, is to be your unapologetic you. And I say that because in the process of understanding who you are and what makes you special, you'll discover your own depth and what you're capable of. You'll get confidence you'll know your place in society in this world. And because I discovered who I was over 10 years ago, arguably my career started to succeed. I've been able to drive impact in, an, in the industry, which I often like to say, I work in a triple male world, sports, media, and tech, often finding myself the only woman in the world, yet I can leverage my womanhood to talk about the 50% population in terms of the experiences that we need across all those industries. I would argue I've been able to have it all. I, I am a working parent. No, I don't have a nanny. I, what I do have is a father that is amazing to my daughter that has enabled me to become who I am becoming. I found my voice in the process. And what your voice does, it accomplishes uh, several things. I'm able to speak up and challenge senior management. And that's something that's really difficult to do as a Latina. Because a Latina, when you are born, you're born and the culture tells you never to challenge seniority. So, but yet challenging seniority in corporate setting is really about intellectual curiosity and trying to do what's right for the business. And so I have found the confidence and the voice to have those conversations. I've been able to stand up against microaggressions, microaggressions that exist every single day. And I use those microaggressions as opportunities to be teachable moments for not only the men, but also the women. And I discovered the power of no. No to business meet the meetings that just never would bring the business forward. And especially no to taking notes in the room because I was only woman in the room. And so arguably the last 10 years, I have been living my unapologetic life. And in the process of connecting with myself and my individuality, it was also important to connect with others. And this is what I call networking. This is something that as females, we rarely do, but should focus on doing. Because when I look at my career and my success, I'm attributing my success honestly 30% is brain power, 10% is luck, 
and 60% is networking. All the jobs that I have secured has been because of my network. And the way I break it down for the females and the females that I mentor is simply this. Network in, inside your organization, network out in your industry and outside of your organization and network wide. Network in. Why should you do this? It accomplishes a couple of things. First, it's important to understand how other roles in part of your organization help support your agenda and the role that you have and kind of linking the interdependencies. At the same time, those conversations around the business interdependencies and business integrations allow you to have and build friendships. And so when you're having a, a crappy day, you can pick up the phone and call Joe or Sally and speak to him or her about what's going through you and they're gonna provide you with advice. When you wanna change, potentially organizations, you build a network internally that will support you and help you in that transition. Why should you network outside of your company? Because outside of your company, it accomplishes a couple things. We always talk about diversity of thought. When you're sitting outside and talking to other people outside of your organization, there may be different ideas, different thoughts that you can apply to your work on a daily basis. It also helps you play an influential role in driving your industry forward. So I could be instantly focused and just focus on Intel sports and media entertainment within my organization, or I can also be overtly and um, focus out externally and talk to the industry at large of what we're trying to do and bring the industry forward from a market perspective, as well as talk about in this scenario that only 3% of female are in sports and how do we change that narrative. And the only way I can make a difference is by finding those individuals that want to drive change. So that means I have to uh, network externally, find those individuals, talk to them about the mission, and have them join me on the journey. And then that work wide. This is what men do really, really well. So let's just, we should just copy their playbook. They build a wide network because it prepares them for any situation that they have in business and how to get ahead. And so they build value in their Rolodex. As females, what I often find is that we value deep relationships. So in the business, you don't have to be best friends with females. You don't have to build a network of five individuals and go deep with them. This is not about you know, being best friends. This is about building your network so you can enrich your professional career and ensure that you're set up for success. So building that Rolodex becomes very important to drive business negotiations, to get help, to cross over in different industries if you want to pivot from one career to another. And that's why that's really important. And when you look at networking as a whole, and as you're looking at this opportunity, as females, we need to proactively seek two things, mentors and sponsors. And I want to drive a distinction because it's, I'm always surprised that often people are confused about the difference. Mentors are advisors. They can advise you on how to ask for a promotion. They can advise you how to do a pivot. They can, mentors have advised me, what does it mean to come back as a working parent and juggling your personal and professional life? They can advise on when you're going through trial, trials and tribulations at home and how do you show up to work and not let that get to you on a daily basis. Sponsors, I got to where I was because I have sponsors. Sponsors are going to advocate for you. They're going to give you, Sally, that opportunity to take a high-profile um, initiative or a high-profile program that's coming on board. They're going to be there on an annual basis saying, this person should get promoted and here's why. So they become your advocate and they can be within your organization, typically within your rank and file, as well as having advocates externally that can send notes to your management of how great you are as an individual from a business perspective, as well as from a professional perspective. And when you have these opportunities to network and interact, you also have an opportunity to inspire. I hear so many amazing stories that never get told, and they inspire me and they give me goosebumps. I know my stories have inspired people, um, the people just to just do and make it happen. Your story and you, what you have to share will inspire the next generation of emerging leaders. It's going to inspire my daughter, who's eight, who wants to hear from you. And we also have the opportunity to raise each other up. And 
you have, and oftentimes people are concerned, I do not want to have this conversation with an executive or sit down with the CEO. It's important to realize that all of us have gone through trials and tribulations. I once was in your shoes. And as I look at senior level and people that I admire, they've been in my shoes. And um, when people are concerned about talking to like the CEO, I'm like, they're human. They're just like you. And so it's important for you to inspire all of you guys are doing chat, inspire each other as you talk because these conferences kind of fuel and provide you with that platform. And then I think it's important as we are part of Girl Geek X today and it's International Women's Day is that we're reminded no matter where you are, whether you're starting your career, whether you're a CEO in a, in a company, our collective obligation so first and foremost, we represent 50% of the population. We should ensure that our voices are heard and that we're engineering experiences, not just for the few, but for every single person on earth. We have to celebrate our female accomplishments. Oftentimes it's heartening when females don't wanna celebrate other females because they're jealous or we wanna tear ourselves down. You have to realize when we celebrate our accomplishments, we're illustrating and we're showcasing the impact that we're making in business. We have to raise girls for those that are having kids and have kids with a grown mindset. The opportunity to ask the tough questions, the opportunity not to take society as it is and help craft a better world. And as, um, the, as Gretchen was talking about earlier is, we have to actively partner with men. I too, and I wanna help you guys with your endeavor is that I'm sick and tired of going to conferences where they're all women because men are currently in the C-suite and they need to help us and they, want, and they need to help us to elevate us. And then to let's be honest, and it happens, every, it happens often for some of us, is that the professional world is tough and sometimes we wanna give up. And we can't give up because we have to help each other rise each other up. And we need to make sure that we're there for each other from a pure perspective. We're there more importantly for the next generation and ensuring that we leave an impact. So similar to how Marie Curie, Mary Curry left an impact on me, it's our obligation to leave an impact for the next generation and open the doors. Now, as I close, I, I want to remind you to celebrate you and your own individuality, your badassness, because all of you guys are badass and rock stars, and never stop realizing what your full potential is. As you carve your path to being a CEO and entering yourself in the boardroom, I want to leave you with a quote that has been etched in my brain, which goes back to Marie Curie. Nothing in life is to be feared. It is only to be understood. Now is the time to understand more so that we may fear less. Thank you. And I don't know if we have time for Q&A because I haven't tracked time. Yes. Thank you, Sandra. We, we do have some questions for you. Um, let's see. There is a question where you mentioned that networking is how you land in most of your jobs. And yep. this person has tried to reach out to her network for mentorship advice and support in finding a job but has found it difficult and has found closed doors and silence. And do you have any suggestions or tricks that you can share with this person? Yeah, so I'll, I'll start with a couple of different ways. Um, networking is about relationships and relationships are about human beings. So you have to connect with the person. Think about it as from a marketing standpoint. Um, the person that you want to connect with, what motivates them? And you start that reach out by understanding what motivates them and engaging with them. So a simple way is um, if you know what they're interested in, send them either an email or a LinkedIn message and start with that because that's what that's how people like will react to you. And then the other way too is oftentimes like all these conferences exist and if you go follow the person that you want to interact with go to the conferences that they may be presenting he or she and do not be afraid to get up in line and shake your hand introduce yourself and do it in context of what he or she spoke about and say you know what i really want to do xyz and can i link in with you or can i get your business card and follow up now one of the things that i have seen as part of that work is people do follow up or sometimes people ask 
for a meeting with me and they're not prepared. So know what that purpose, you're gonna have that meeting. Why do you want that meeting? What do you wanna get out of it? And do your homework, really important. Awesome, thank you. We have one more question, I believe, on um, how to find a mentor. Do you have any suggestions on how to approach potential mentors? Yeah, so in your organization, I'm assuming many of you have career uh, discussions or how, how are you gonna get ahead and what's next with your direct manager? And if you don't, it's your obligation. I always like to say, you're the CEO of your career, you own it. So if your manager's not giving you that, uh, if your manager's not having professional career conversations, you should drive it. And as part of this professional career conversations, you should ask, I would like a mentor. And again, like I mentioned earlier, mentors serve different purposes. I've had a mentor for when I came back um, in re-entering the workforce after having a child. I've had a mentor in terms of how do I ask for a raise. I have a mentor in terms of I want to pivot from uh, marketing to being a general manager. And so be crystal clear and have purpose of what type of mentor you seek. And you can have hundreds of mentors. It doesn't just have to be one or two. Understanding where you are in your career and where you want to go, what type of mentor should you have and work with your manager to provide, to help find that mentor. If your manager is helping you, then look within your organization and find opportunities where you can engage with him and her via an email. Um, as a perfect example, to, I saw the panel lineup today. It is amazing. And the ones that motivate you, link in with them. Once you link in with them and they say, yes, I'd want to uh, accept your LinkedIn, ask for a 10 minute meeting. Um, and then when you have that 10, meeting, 10 minute meeting, make sure that you you explain like why you want to meet with them, what you want to get out of it, and then follow up accordingly. Um, and so that's, I mean, Sakurtha reached out to me via LinkedIn and said, hey, do you want to purchase? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So it's not as hard as people think the tools are there. Um, LinkedIn, go to Google, Silicon Valley, you know, females in tech, there's so many activities out there. So um, it starts with you being fearless about being the CEO of your career. And you know what, sometimes you're gonna get to the point and say, no, I'm not interested and that's okay. You keep on plugging along and you're gonna get, you'll be surprised. For one no, you're gonna get 10 yeses. That's great advice. I really like that part about going up to people at events. We've actually found a lot of women have seen success in going up to the speakers after a girl eat dinner, going up to other women and talking to them about their jobs. And then suddenly there's interviews happening and a woman has found her new opportunity. So yep. there's definitely a lot of great pathways in in-person events. And also when making that LinkedIn request, having a very specific ask and request. Absolutely. Um, sometimes they get requests for, can I pick your brain over coffee? And I'm like, can you get more specific with that? I might say yes, if I knew how exactly this conversation can move forward your career, I can invest in you. So yeah. we have one last question, um, if we have time, we have, I think two more minutes, on how you can be apologetic, um, how do you be unapologetically you, and how do you re realize who you are after acting not quite you for many years? It, it, it's a journey, um, and I will tell you, it was probably one of my darkest journeys of my life, and the way I embarked on it, and that's a, whoever's asking that question, who wants to in with me, I'm happy to have a conversation. It starts with understanding your values, and I was actually not confused. When I started my career, I wanted the title, I wanted the money, and I wanted the company, and never did I think about, wow, how you treat a woman is really important wow, the opportunities to go from different organizations really important, so kind of uh, looking at different career paths. Um, the notion that I want to build and create things, I did not understand that. And it, you can seek to understand that at a very young age. It's not based on all these years of experience. And so you have to go through an exploration of what your values are. You have to go through an exploration of what your passion what you're, what you're passionate about and what you're really good at. And I look at those three intersection points and you start to figure out, well, who are you? And then you embrace that. And then you check that with your friends, your family and your colleagues. And I always I like to um, send notes of like, if you were to have one word that would describe me, who would it be? And those words, albeit we all have different language and different vernacular, should be consistent with who you want to be as a person. Um, and so it's a journey. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight. 
It's sometimes putting a mirror of your face, like I want to be this person, but I'm so not this person. And so how do you evolve and transition to that journey? And so for the person that asked the question, I'm happy to do that because I do believe that if everybody's being the true self, we would have a happier and kinder world. That's a great note to end on. Thank you so much, Sandra, for joining us. Thank you so much. The keynote of Go Get and Elevate. I'm sure she, her LinkedIn messages are open and feel free to tweet. And um, yeah, we'll see you uh, at the next Girl Geek Dinner, hopefully. Take, take care. Take care. Have a good one. Bye-bye.